Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you what is new with Go 1.23. Go 1.23 was released on August 13, 2024, a few weeks ago, and at the time of this recording, there are binaries for all platforms. This includes Linux, Windows, macOS, including Homebrew, as well as corresponding Docker images for Debian 12, Alpine 320. Please follow the steps corresponding to your platform to upgrade to 1.23. Go 1.23 includes many changes to the toolchain, runtime, libraries, and the language itself. In this video, I will call out six new changes that I think are worth mentioning. However, as usual, please review the official release notes for more details. The six new changes I will cover in this video are Range over Funk, the new unique package, the new Iter package, the new functions added to the Slices package to support iterations, the new functions added to the Maps package to support iterations, and last but not least, two minor changes to the standard library. Let's start. So what is this new range over Funk feature? I have in this example a bunch of different implementations that allow you to implement iterators and use the for and range keywords, but in this case, I want you to pay attention to two complete examples, two different examples. The first one will be one doing a multiplication by two that happens to be returning a slice. And the other one will be doing something similar, a multiplication by two, but happens to be returning an iterator. So what is the difference? If you recall, historically, when using for and range, we can only loop through types of slices and maps. This is what is the biggest difference added to the language. Now we can implement an iterator right here that doesn't necessarily have to allocate a slice in advance. In practice, for our customers, they will look more or less the same. This is a really basic example, but if you notice, we are passing in um, a slice of values, well, a variadic list of ints, but in practice, it will return back an index and a value, and they can just do whatever they want to do in this example. This is kind of the biggest change in the language. I can talk more about this, and I will be talking about this in, in a blog that we'll be writing in the future, but for now, this is kind of the thing. You can implement iterators that don't have to allocate anything in advance, but rather maybe step-by-step step return those values back to the client. Let's talk about the next item. The new thing that was added in this release was the unique package. This package allows you to canonize values. Well, what it means is creating a copy of the value that you can refer in the future, allowing programs to deduplicate values and also reduce more memory footprint. In this example that I have right here probably is not the most memory intensive example, but what I'm showing you right here is that both of these references refer to the same value. So in this case, this will be always returned back by the unique dot make function. So if we run this, you will notice that it's printing out true. What is important to call out in this package is that these values that we are passing in, so this value in this case, the value user has to be comparable, which is a new thing in generic. So if the value is not comparable, the function make will not allow you to do that and will fail. So this one is not comparable because I'm using a slice of users. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go into the third item I want to show you. Another package that was added to this release was the iter package that implements two types that happen to be used to define the types that are used in subsequent packages, such as slices and maps, and in practice implement the types that the range over funk logic now requires. So these are the two new types which happen to be sending on pushing back one value or two values like a key value or an index value. The example that I have here is used to go through a loop of values and then if the yield uh, says is false which means it's a break it will just stop the for, it doesn't receive any arguments, it's just as an example, nothing complicated. What I want to show you is another thing that was added to the iter package. So in this case, the typical way to use it will be to receive those values from the iterator. This means that this iterator is pushing values to the range, but in some cases we don't want to do that depending on how we're planning to use the iterator. So there is a function called pull, and there's another one called pull2, depending on the seek type that we are using, either seek or seek2. So we can pull the values from the iterator itself. In practice, the result is the same. It's just that uh, depending on how you're planning to use those values, you either use the pushing mechanism, which is the default one, or the pulling mechanism, which is the one I'm showing you right here, which returns back a way to stop the iterator, which is called typically using a defer, and a way to pull the next value using next. So there is a typical for loop that is pulling next using next. And when I'm done, I'll just call break that then triggers the stop in the defer 
function so in practice if we run this you will notice that they basically do the same thing we are printing out different values different times but in the end the results are the same this as, as 0 10 1 11 and so on and so forth so again it's sort of a way to execute the same iterator the same implementation and you can see this one is either and this one is either the same implementation is just depending on the code and the implementation maybe we need to push values using a range or maybe we need to pull the values using pull functions let's jump into the fourth item i want to show you the fourth new thing is nine new functions that were added to the slices package that convert from a typical slice to an iterator. The examples I have right here, I will just run them in a minute, but I, I just want to show you how easy this is. So there are nine new functions, and then the one I'm using is, in this case, a chunk, collect, sorted with values, and finally a backward. Chunk returns back a new slice with sub slices, depending on the number of values that we are passing in. Uh, collect just returns back the values as one single slice so in this case as passing in the chunks and then creating a slice that happen to have sub slices the sorted and values well as you can imagine values returns back the values that we're passing in and then the sorted one sorts those values and finally backward does the opposite return the values backwards so if you run this you will notice what i mean so numbers is five to one chunk create the slices with the number of elements that i'm passing in, in this case it's five and four three and two and one this will be the values that we are passing in to collect collect will create a new slice with all of those values so this is the result sorted does what you were imagining it sorts the values and finally backwards returns the values from the end to the beginning so in this case we have index four the value will be one then we have uh, the index three the value will be two and the, the index two will be three and so on and so forth you get the idea Let's talk about the new functions that were added to the maps package. So for maps, it's a little bit similar to what we saw in the slices. There are five new functions that happen to be interacting with maps. In this case, I have my map, which is used a map from a type string to a type int. So the key is a string, the, map, the value is an int. And I'm doing something similar. So I'm pulling the values, which the new function called values, and I'm sorting those values using the slices function. Then we do something similar with the keys. And again, we sorted those keys using the slices sorted function. So in practice, what this does is the following. It just uh, receives the map with the values and it sorts them and then the keys it does something similar it sorts them again these are only two of the five that are available in the standard library so you can check those out okay and finally the last item i want to cover and show you that was added to this release the last item i want to show you is two minor changes that were added to the standard library one will be the function repeat in the slices package and the second one will be a new field called pattern in the request type in the net http package i'm using a test here just for just to change it a little bit but in practice what we are looking for is the result that i have down here it returns an array in this case a json array of uh, the pattern which will be get high and get high twice because we passed in a repeat of two in the slices so if we run the test you will notice that it will it will be passing as expected so nothing too controversial and that's it i mean 1.23 added this range over funk it is a massive new feature but in practice we need to wait a little bit to see how this evolves this is sort of similar to what happened with generics a few releases ago and we need to wait a little bit we need to see what the community does what kind of new iterators the community implements it's, it's a nice new feature i think it will be valuable especially if you have those cases where memory is really important and you don't have or you don't want to return a complete slice back to the to your user or map or whatever the case may be and you can have a way to you know step by step pull the values or push the values depending on the logic or however user wants to use the iterators maybe maybe could be valuable i still think uh, it's nice to have i still i'm happy this is still backwards compatible with everything that we have so nothing is broken so far but we will see in the near future hopefully we can see new a few new packages and implementations out there that can take advantage of this that's it thank you for watching i will talk to you next time take care see you and please let me know in the comments what are your new features what are your new favorite features in go 1.23 what do you think about the release let me know take care stay safe see you next time Bye bye